pleasing unto you. Hallelujah. As believers in Yahuwah and Yahusha, it's imperative that we understand what his word says. That we be doers of the word and not hearers only. And that we have an Elohim that loves us so much that he has written in his pages these precious promises to each one that would believe, that would trust in him, that would receive him as Elohim of their lives. To trust and the promises that are written to us in these pages gives us the ability to do things in this life that are of Yahuwah's will, his authority, his power. So let's see as we continue in this journey of understanding and growth together what the scriptures have to say for us. See, Scripture is jam-packed with promises made to us by Yahuwah. And when we start digging into the promises of Yahuwah, we find that he promises us many things. Yahuwah's help and guidance, Yahuwah's faithfulness, our salvation, wisdom, shalom, or peace, if you will, joy and ahaba, love. It only comes from him, for he is ahaba. He is the source of all love. Riches in the Shemayim, adoption into his family, strength and power, Yahuwah's provision, eternal life, deliverance from enemies, from danger, and from temptation even, healing and renewal. See, knowing the promises of Yahuwah can help us in our daily lives to be able to navigate both big and small decisions and to conquer fear temptation, and danger. And when we know what Yahuwah has promised us, we can confidently claim those things as our, in our own lives. Fourteen promises of Yahuwah's guidance and his help are made to us. We see, for this is Alhim, is our Alhim. For this Alhim is our Alhim forever and ever, and he will be our guide even to the end says Psalm 48, 14. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for Yahuwah your Alhim will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, verse 9. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for Yahuwah holds him with his hand. Psalm 37, 4. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path, Psalms 119, verse 105. For I am Yahuwah, your Alhim, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, for I will help you, Isaiah 41, 13. Yahuwah says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you, Psalms 32, verse 8. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Yahuwah, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalms 9, verse 10. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, verse 6. If you return to Yahuwah, then your fellow Yashraelites and your children will be shown compassion by their captors and will return to this land. For Yahuwah your Alhim is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. 
Second Chronicles 30, verse 9. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Isaiah 30, verse 21. We were just talking about that this morning. How he leads and guides us. How he's drawn us unto himself. Praise Yahuwah for that small voice that leads and guides and directs us in this path. Once you understand and recognize that voice, you're on a journey of your life. For Yahuwah will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, verse 11. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but Yahuwah establishes their steps. Proverbs 16, verse 9. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. John 10, verses 3 and 4. We see 10 promises about Yahuwah's faithfulness. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of shalom be removed, says Yahuwah. Who has compassion on you? Isaiah 54, 10. Understand, therefore, that Yahuwah, your Alhim, is indeed Alhim. He is the faithful Alhim who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13. So Yahuwah is faithful. Who will establish you and guard you from the evil one? 2 Thessalonians 3.3. For the word of Yahuwah is upright, and all of his work is done in faithfulness. Psalms 33.4. So your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. Psalms 119.90. Alhim is faithful, by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adon. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 9. So let's hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promises is faithful, according to Hebrews 10, 23. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For Yahuwah, your Alhim, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. So Yahuwah's loving kindness indeed never ceases. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23. You have 34 promises about salvation. For it is by grace you have been saved through Amuna. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of Yahuwah. Ephesians 2 verse 8. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their amuna in Alhim, who forgives sinners. Romans 4 verse 5. Who dares accuse us whom Yahuwah has chose for his own? No one. For Alhim himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Yahushua HaMashiach died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at Alhim's right hand. Pleading for us, according to Romans 8, 33 and 34. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. 1 John 1.19, or I'm sorry, 1.9. Therefore, 
accept each other just as HaMashiach has accepted you, so that Alhim will be given glory or esteem. Romans 15, verse 7. Just think how much more the blood of HaMashiach will purify our consciousness from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living Alhim. For by the power of the eternal Ruach, the Mashiach offered himself to Alhim as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 9.14 All praise to Alhim, the father of our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because Yahuwah raised Yahushua HaMashiach from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in the Shemayim for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. 1 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. Believe in Adon, Yahusha, and you will be saved, you and your household, according to Acts 16, verse 31. So if you declare with your mouth that Yahusha is Adon, and believe in your heart that Yahuwah raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your amuna and are saved. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. But I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in Alhim who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. John 5, verse 24. For the grace of Yahuwah has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to unrighteousness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and righteous lives in this present age. Titus 2, verses 11 and 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for all Heem's wrath remains on them. John 3, verse 36. And how from infancy you have known the Kadosh scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through Amuna in Yahushua HaMashiach, 2 Timothy 3.15. For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his one and his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, John 3.16. And in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of Yahuwah's grace, Ephesians 1, verse 7. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed, John 8, 36. For I'm not ashamed of the good news, because it is the power of Elohim that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Hebrew and then to the Gentiles, Romans 1, 16. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved, Matthew 24, 13. And this is good and pleases Elohim, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. For Yahuwah has united you with Yahushua HaMashiach. For our benefit, Yahuwah made him to be wisdom itself. See, Mashiach made us right with Yahuwah. He made us pure and kadosh, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scripture says, if you want to boast, boast only about Yahuwah. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30 and 31. He saves us not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He washed, us, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Ruach HaKodesh, according to Titus 3, verse 5. So for you know that Elohim paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Mashiach, the sinless, spotless lamb of Elohim. 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19. And Mashiach lives within, a, within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Ruach gives you life because you have made, uh, been made right with Yahuwah. The Ruach of Yahuwah, who raised Yahusha from the dead, lives in you. And just as Yahuwah raised Yahusha 
HaMashiach from the dead? He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Ruach living within you. Romans. Yes, yeah, so bring out that word, Amuna, is grace. Please yourself, please. Okay. I'm just going to mute everyone. Thank you. All right. Where were we at here? All right. This is real love. Not that we loved Yahuwah, but that he loves us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. 1 John 4.10. So just as sin rules over all people and brought them to death, now Yahuwah's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with Yahuwah and resulting in eternal life through Yahushua HaMashiach, our Adon. Romans 5.21 But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Isaiah 53, 5. For Yahuwah chose to save us through our Adon Yahushua HaMashiach, not to pour out his anger on us. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. I am overwhelmed with joy in Yahuwah my Elohim, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. Isaiah 61.10. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priest. A Kadosh nation. All his very own possessions. As a result, you can show others the goodness of all him. For he called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Brothers, listen. We are here to proclaim that through this man, Yahusha, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in Yahuwah's sight. Something the Torah of, the, of Moshe could never do. Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. For Yahuwah's will was for us to be made kadosh by the, the sacrifice of the body of Yahusha HaMashiach once for all time. For by the one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made kadosh, that is you and I, according to Hebrews 10, 10 through 14. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1, 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of Yahuwah. Children born not of the natural descent, nor of human decision or of husband's will, but born of Alhim, John 1, verses 12 and 13. Kepha replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh, Acts 2, verse 38. We see three promises of wisdom made. For Yahuwah gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk is blameless. Proverbs 2, verses 6 and 7. Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. Proverbs 1, 23. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask Alhim, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. James 1, verse 5. We also see eight promises about shalom, joy, and ahaba. First we see is in John 14, 27, where he says, Shalom, I leave with you. My shalom I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Therefore, since we have been made right in Yahuwah's sight by Amuna, we have shalom with Yahuwah because of what Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adon, has done for us. Romans 5, verse 1. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. John 15, 3. But the root of the righteousness will be shalom. 
Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever, according to Isaiah 32, 17. So take delight in Yahuwah, and he will give you the desires of your heart, Psalms 37, 4. So dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from Yahuwah. Everyone who loves has been born of Yahuwah and knows Yahuwah. But whoever does not love does not know Yahuwah because Yahuwah is a Haba. He is love, according to 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. And the Shalom of Alhim, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Yahushua HaMashiach, Philippians 4, verse 7. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from Yahuwah's love, neither death nor life, neither Malkin nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of Gehenna can separate us from Yahuwah's love. No power in the skies above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of Yahuwah that is revealed in Yahushua HaMashiach, our Adon, according to Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. Hallelujah. What a promise. We also see five promises about gaining riches in the Shemayim. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of the Shemayim, Matthew 18, 4. But do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moss and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures of the Shemayim, where the moss and the vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, verses 19 and 21. So if anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Mashiach, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. Mark 9, 41. Baruch are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in the Shemayim. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Matthew 5, verses 11 and 12. See, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? John 14, 2. We see six promises about adoption into Alhim's family. See, the Ruach you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again, but rather the Ruach you receive brought, you, uh, brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father, Romans 8, 15. Baruch are the meek, for they will inherit the earth, according to Matthew 5, 5. But now, this is what Yahuwah says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Yasharel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine, Isaiah 43, 1. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, John 14, 8. All praises to Yahuwah, the father of our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because you who raised Yahushua HaMashiach from the dead, now we live with great expectation. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in the Shemayim for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. 1 Peter 1 verses 3 and 4. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of Yahuwah. John 1 verses, uh, I'm sorry, John 1, 12. We see five promises of strength and power. Where he says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Isaiah 40, 29. But those whose hope is in Yahuwah will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, verse 31. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your Alhim. 
I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, Isaiah 41.10. So have a moon in Yahuwah. Yahusha answered, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Mark 11, verses 22 and 23. And I will put my ruach in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my Torah. Ezekiel 36, verse 27. We also find 32 promises of Yahuwah's provision. So he will love you and barak you and increase your numbers. He will barak the fruit of your womb, the crops of your land, your grain, your new wine and olive oil the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks in the land he swore to your ancestors to give to you. Deuteronomy 7.13. So keep the book of the Torah always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua 1.8. So those who are honest and fair, who refuse to profit by fraud, who stay far away from bribes, who refuses to listen to those who plot murder, who shut their eyes to all enticement to do wrong. These are the ones who will dwell on high. The rocks of the mountains will be their fortress. Food will be supplied to them, and they will have water in abundance. Isaiah 33, verses 15 and 16. But if a wicked person turns away from all the sins they have committed and keeps all of my decrees and does what is just and right, that person will surely live. They will not die. None of the offenses they have committed will be remembered against them. Because of the righteous things they have done, they will live. Ezekiel 18, verses 21-22. So if your sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Matthew 7, 11. Trust in Yahuwah and do good. Dwell in the land. Enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in Yahuwah, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahuwah. Trust in him, and he will do this. Psalms 37, verses 3 and 5. So worship Yahuwah your Alhim, and his Baraka will be upon your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. Exodus 23, 25. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 6, 33. So if they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. Job 36, 11. If you believe, you will receive what you ask for in prayer. Matthew 21, 22. And I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Deuteronomy eleven fifteen. See, who is good to those whose hope is in him? To the one who seeks him. Lamentations three twenty five. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says Yahuwah Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of the Shemayim and pour out so much Baraka that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. See, Yahuwah gives sight to the blind. Yahuwah lifts up those who are bowed down. And Yahuwah loves the righteous. Psalms 146 verse 8. And those who trust in their riches will fall. But the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. So take delight in Yahuwah, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 4. Moreover, when Yahuwah gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of Yahuwah, according to Ecclesiastes 5, verse 19. But Alhim will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Psalms 9, 18. And I will barack her with abundant provisions. Her poor I will satisfy with food. Psalms 132, 15. 
and by Elohim will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Yahushua HaMashiach, Philippians 4.19. Turn, or then turn, turning to his disciples, Yahushua said, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for Yahuwah feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Luke 12, verses 22 and 24. So let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6 verse 9. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my ruach on your offspring and my baraka on your descendants. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Then Yahushua declared, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 6, verse 35. So carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. Deuteronomy 29, 9. See, Yahuwah is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He gives me along the, the uh, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Psalms 23 verses 1 through 3. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek Yahuwah will praise him. May your hearts live forever. Psalms 22 26. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though our, outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 and 17. Baruch are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And Yahuwah is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do. Psalms 1, 3. So stay on the path that Yahuwah, your Elohim, has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives, and the land you are about to enter and occupy. Deuteronomy 5.33. There's 10 promises of eternal life written for us. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever, Revelation 21.4. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Adon will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. Isaiah 25, 8. But your dead will live. Yahuwah, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dusk wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Isaiah 26, 19. And surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah forever. Psalms 23, verse 6. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death, Psalm 72, 13. But Elohim will redeem me from the realm of the dead. He will surely take me to himself, Psalms 49, 15. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. John 14, verses 2 and 3. And I tell you the truth, anyone who obeys my teachings will never die. John 8, 51. And I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in Yahuwah, who sent me, have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death unto life, according to John 5, 24. 
We also see 16 promises of deliverance from enemies, from danger, and from temptations. Yahuwah helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and he saves them because they take refuge in him. Psalms 37, 40. Yahuwah will fight for you. You need only to be still. Exodus 14, 14. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Proverbs 1, 33. The name of Yahuwah is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Proverbs 18, 10. Yahuwah keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. Yahuwah keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Psalms 121, verse 7 and 8. So sing to Yahuwah. Give halal. Give praise to Yahuwah. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. Jeremiah 20, 13. So Baruch are those who have regarded have regard for the weak, for Yahuwah delivers them in times of trouble. But Yahuwah protects and preserves them. They are counted among the Baruch in the land. He does not give them over to the desires of their foes. Psalm 41, verses 1 and 2. So submit yourselves then to Yahuwah. Resist Hasatan, the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. For Yahuwah your Alhim is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. So those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Proverbs 28 verse 26. For you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Psalms 23 5. And no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And Yahuwah is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10 13. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will prosper or succeed. You will silence every voice that rises up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of Yahuwah. Their vindication will come from me. Isaiah 54, 17. But Benjamin, he said, let the beloved of Yahuwah rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one Yahuwah loves rest between his shoulders. That might be in his bosom, I think, according to Deuteronomy 33, 12. Though I walk in the midst of troubles, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes, and with your right hand you save me. Psalms 138.7. A whole lot of saving going on in these promises I hear. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. That rock is called Yahusha HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We also see eight promises for healing. And the prayer offered in Amuna will make the sick person well. Yahuwah will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. James 5.15 Heal me, Yahuwah, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise, Jeremiah 17.14 says. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalms 147 verse 3 but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares Yahuwah. Jeremiah 30, 17. I am Yahuwah who heals you. Exodus 15, verses 26. Worship Yahuwah your Alhim, and his baraka will be on your food and water, and I will take away sickness from among you. Exodus 23, 25. And my Elohim will meet you all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Yahushua HaMashiach says Philippians 4.19. And nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy shalom and security. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. We see 11 promises of renewal. Therefore, if anyone is in Mashiach, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17. 
For the grace of Elohim has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to unrighteousness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and righteous lives in this present age, Titus 2, verses 11 and 12, where Yahuwah made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of Elohim, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the Torah, but under grace. Romans 6, 14. That doesn't mean that you're un under the ability to break the Torah. It just means you're not under the, 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 the requirements of the law unto death. Therefore, you are under the grace of Yahuwah, for your sins have been forgiven you. Therefore, you're no longer under the punishment of the Torah. So do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Colossians 3, verses 9 and 10. And we know that in all things, Yahuwah works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, all wickedness or all unrighteousness, according to 1 John 1, 9. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put my new ruach in you, and I will take out your stony, stubborn hearts, and give you a tender, responsive heart. Ezekiel 36, verses 25 and 26. So you, you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to Yahuwah through Yahushua HaMashiach, Romans 6, 11. All praise to Yahuwah, the father of our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because Yahuwah raised Yahushua HaMashiach from the dead, now we live with great expectation and have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in the Shemayim for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect that the glory of Yahuwah and Yahuwah who is the Ruach, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. What an honor it is to be able to hear, to witness, to read, and to understand your promises, Father. We thank you for writing them down for us so that we have the opportunity in this day and this age to be able to read your promises and to be able to believe them so that we would receive them. So we thank you for your promised word, Yahushua HaMashiach, that came to demonstrate these things, to live them out as an example to us all, so that we can have hope and confidence that we can also make it to the end, that we can enter in to your promised land in the Shemayim, where all your promised inheritances, your promised treasures are stored up for us. So we look forward to that glorious day when we see you, when we enter in for eternity into your presence. So Father, we ask as we continue to discuss this matter of your promises today, that your Ruach will stir your people, that it will move amongst us, and that this discussion will be edifying to us, and that we will have even a greater understanding and revelation of your love for us. So as always, we give you thanks and praise and all esteem. Let you be honored this day, Father Yahuwah. Through and in Yahuwah, and through and in Yahusha, we pray these things. Hallelujah. All righty. Well, I hope that these words of, that you've heard this morning have been speaking loud and clear to you. Because we have a Father that loves us dearly, that has done so much to get us to this point in our lives that we should be so thankful and so grateful to know that we are one of his chosen few out of the many that are called you each one of you are his chosen because you have heard his call 
you've read his promises and you you believe them and therefore the change is taking place in your lives and you're a new creation now you've been made brand new in his likeness in his image hallelujah so praise him this morning for these promises that he's given to us that help us to continue to press on to continue to endure when we seem like the whole world is against us when we're set apart we not like everybody else we've been made new creation unlike this dark evil world we have light in us we have light in us we have salt in us we are the salt of this earth and it's time for us to stand up and be the chosen ones hallelujah brother jadiel good morning shabbat shalom are you there with us I'm going to make you, uh... oh, you're already there. Are you there, brother? I see you there, but I don't see you. <laughs> All righty, well, we'll just uh, come back to you in a moment then, Brother Jadiel. Where is my brother JP? I'm looking for you. There you are over there. Shabbat shalom, Brother JP. There he is. Good morning, good sir. I want to hear some thoughts from you this morning about these promises that you've heard spoken to you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Faka. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, it, it just continues to make me, uh, give me sol like a solid, like to make it solid. I don't, I'm trying to use the right words to make it solid and, and to know like there's just like these this to look forward to and to know that that there's there's this um like the promises because you keep saying i mean i'm i was like listening to study i'm like man like all these all these verses you're pulling out are just showing what is given to us it's like this is given to you that walk and you have his son who abides in you and you abide in his son and it's like this is yours like just just walk in it you know, just walking, that's all you got to do now. You don't got to, and it's just, you know, because I think about like, even like the, the the promise of like eternal life and you already have it. Like when you are abiding in the sun, you know, it's like this, it's, I know, I know to some, it might look like, now nah, you have to wait till the end. And it's like, no, you already have it. If you abide in the sun, like if you stay in his covenant, you don't have it when you leave and you decide to walk a different direction and, and you and you then you never you know then you don't have it and and these these promises are like that to me where it's like wow like how you know it's like that scripture that the brother would bring out saying like how great a, a people are these that have this perfect elohim that gives them this perfect instructions shows them the right ways you know, and and I see that in studies that I've been doing with, with somebody recently. We've been doing some studies and I'm just telling her, like, I'm saying, look, you don't even have to, like, everything's given to you. Like, the instructions are given to you, the ways of him. And then he gives you, he says here, you know, like, it's like, I mean, I look at, like, the instructions of, of dietary as a promise, like, of good health, like, to to know, like, so all it just I just wrap them up and I'm just like wow like how great a, a, an Elohim like Yahuwah to give you everything to show you the ways and then and then to say it's all yours it's here just walk in it and that's all I keep saying because I tell my children you know when we talk about the Torah we talk about the instructions I say look we just live in it now we're walking in it. Before you would have to, you know, you might have to read, and I still do, you know, but it's just like, like I, I'm eating the word and I'm just living it now. It's in me. So his promises are like that to me, where I'm just like, but to be um, shown by your study today, to be shown, like, look, it's just a remembrance. And it's a great way to um, bring it up again. Because um, some of those promises you, you don't think about, you know what I mean? You don't. I, like I said, the biggest one is everlasting life, like to be in, in his, on, on the table. He says, I'm going to set a table and you're going to eat with me on this table. It's like, all right, wow. Like, all right, I'm just going to abide in you because that's where I want to be. You know what I mean? So 
Hallelujah. I, I, I don't have, that's all I got to say, but it's just, it's just exciting. I mean, I get overwhelmed with thought more than anything. My words can't even catch up to my mind because I'm just like, wow, like, because there was a day when I wasn't in his covenant, when I, when I didn't have these promises and I didn't, I wasn't even knowing that there was a promise. I didn't know. Like, so to be in it today, I'm, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like, you know, so thank you. Thank you for putting those scriptures together. And I praise Yahuwah for putting that on your heart to, um, to reveal that again for us all to hear. Shabbat Shalom. Well, yeah, well, you know what? If you don't know what the promises are, it's kind of ho hard for you to hold on to anything, you know, and to have confidence that he's with you, especially when things are swirling all around you and life gets really mad, you know. You got to know that you're in under his shelter. You're under his protection, under his provisions. I mean, there's so much there that he has written there for us to, to find and to hold on to, to help us through this difficult life that we we live in, you know. I mean, it's not easy walking a set apart life. You got a lot of temptations. You got a lot of trials in this life that'll have a way of pulling you out to, to make the old man try to come back alive again. And, you know, you can't allow him to ever rise back up. And you sit, like you said, you have that guarantee, that promise of eternal life. The moment that you believe all those things that you've done in your past are forgiven. They're not remembered no more. So therefore you have a, a, a ability to start fresh and new in him, you know, and then you have to endure to the end because you can still lose it. It's not a one saved, always saved kind of thing. You know, uh, you can, you, you can, the scripture is very clear about it. You know, you save somebody that's walking away from it. You, you saved a soul, you know, somebody that, knows the truth and walks away from it. I, I, have, I have a hard time fathoming how that can be, but it, it does happen. And, um, you know, if, the, the, if you go back into the world and you get in and walk and live that way again, guess what? You're, there's no more provision for that sin after that because now you've started it all over again. That's why he says, you know, should you continue to sin? You know, Yahuwah says, no, forbid, no way. Don't do it, you know. Because if you really think about it, you keep putting those things back on Hamashiach again and again and again, you know. Uh, yeah, he said you got to forgive them 70 times 70 times or 7 times 70, but that don't mean you got to use them all up, you know. You got you to try to walk in a righteous way. That's the righteousness that is placed upon us when the Ruach comes in and, and takes up residency. And that word that you keep studying that, that you that you feeding on you know it gives you life it transforms you it it makes you into its own image its own likeness as you eat it you be you 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 they have that saying you know you are what you eat well, this is a true statement if you eat on the word of yahuwah guess what you begin to take on the likeness of that word you begin to walk it out you begin to live it you know and, and it's not as hard as you thought it was Oh my goodness, how can I go without doing these things? Guess what? You ain't, you ain't really supposed to be doing those things anyhow. You know, and that's the part that we got to understand. And, and to, as we continue to see these promises, we got to embrace them. You know, he gives them to us so that we can hold on to, so that we can declare them. He loves to hear his word spoken back to him. So speak those promises back to him. You know, grab a hold of them and declare them each and every day. You know, shoot them up to him. Say, hey, this is what you promised me. And I'm holding on to this promise. You know, you said it. Therefore, I believe you're going to do it. You know, he says it. He's going to work all things together for the good of those that are called according to his purpose, right? Are you called, brother? I think you are. So if you if you know the love of your, of your father, then them promises you can hold on to strong and firm and know that it's just going to get better from here, even though it may get more difficult sometimes. Because, you know, our world out here is changing. It's getting darker and eviler every day. So, you know, we know that we're going to – persecution and prosecution, whichever word it is, persecution, yeah, that's the one, is coming if it's not already here in your in your life. So – Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for 
your input and we're going to go ahead and uh, move on over to brother Donnie Williams. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Good morning to you. Shabbat Shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud yes, Shabbat, shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. First, give an honor to the Most High Yahuwah and his son, Yahushua Mashiach. Uh, thank them once again for allowing the Ruach to speak through you. It's a powerful and refreshing message on today. Uh, it really refreshes me, and it should refresh us all um, to know that we can live with the promises that Yahuwah has given us, and we can put a stamp on it. You know, we don't have to hesitate or think about it or doubt it, which some people do doubt some of the words of Yahuwah, but we have an assurance of these promises that he has given us and to look forward to these promises that he's given us to know that when he said, he settles it and it's done. It's not as he's doing it, it is already done. We just have to receive it, stand still and wait on the promises that he give us. And it gives us more Muna to know that we are saved from sin. Uh, we don't have to sin because we have an advocate, which is the Mashiach that saves us and cleanses us from the obedience of our audience with them. So this is a powerful message and I take everybody to take it in. Just claim it. Walk there in righteousness. We know right from wrong. We know his word. We know what he wants us to do and what he don't want us to do. We know the causes of when we do the righteousness, we have a reward. And if we don't, there's a curse come behind it. So thanks for this message. It's really refreshing me, which is refreshing us all. And I pray that us all take this message very seriously and stamp it and know in our heart we can say hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, if you can stand on these promises and see them and declare them on a daily basis, you know, I have these putting together. It probably would be a good idea to maybe print these off. Brother JP's good about that stuff. He likes to print things off. But if you had these printed off and or on your phone and you're just declaring these things, when you wake up in the morning, declare these promises. You know, a promise is given so that it can be uh, declared back to him. He wants you he wants to hear you declaring that promise that you have grabbed a hold of and that you're putting your your whole amuna into so if you grab a hold of it and you believe it and you begin to declare and speak it out you're putting a power of the ruach uh, of the word out there and you're giving it life you're putting your breath to it you're declaring that word back to yahuwah he loves it he has no choice his word is not going to return to him void is what uh, scripture says so we got to trust it. We got to use these promises. The promises are here for our benefit. They're not just words that are written on a page. You got to understand the promises are speaking directly to you. They're telling you something that he wants you to know. So that when you get into these difficult struggles of life, these promises are going to pop up and they're going to have power and authority in your life when you declare them to the problem. You know, the word is there as a, is like a two-edged sword, it says. It's going to cut and it's going to divide. It's going to destroy the works of the enemy there. We got to really, truly get used to using these words that are written in these pages for us. When we start to believe them and we start to let them uh, take life in us, they begin to come out, <laughs> excuse me, and we begin to, declare, to, to confess them to declare them, to speak them boldly, that we know that they're real, that, they're, that they have power and authority. And when you speak them knowing that, that's that amuna that rises up in you, and you will have what you declare according to what he says in his word. That's a promise, right? So let's hold on to those things. Good morning, Sister Anna. Shabbat Shalom. Or Ina. Got to bear with me. Good. My pronunciation isn't always great. So, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to declare um, in, in, in communion with what you're saying, the importance of understanding fully um, how to apply those promises. Because sometimes people just look at it only from a natural perspective. 
And we know that that is not the fullness of the revelation of the kingdom, because this is a supernatural kingdom that will fully manifest at the return of Yahushua HaMashiach. It will fully manifest at that time, and those who have obeyed him and worshiped him will be invited into the land and to really enjoy the fullness of everything he's promised because there are some people that are living in countries and they are so systemically oppressed that they may not be able to see the fullness at this time of some of those promises in a natural realm because the satan is very real and so if they're not fully understanding what this is about they could begin to walk into confusion because it's like oh father said this but yet and still i'm still um, not seeing his esteem in this area of my life because this oppression is still happening. But we have to understand that that oppression is coming through persecution. That oppression is coming through, like you said, it's a systemic dark world controlled by the Satan at this particular time because he is the prince of the power of the air and he has been given a season. He's been given certain levels of authority for a season for the testing and for the proving. I'll say that again. For for the testing and for the proving of the saints and so while we may be seeing certain levels of persecution and trial we have to hold fast to what yahushua said which is i am going to redeem you and restore you of it all i don't lie there will be a time when he appears and we will be the ones rejoicing and those in the world will be the ones in sorrow because at that time they will know fully everything that you have done wicked i'm going to reward you for it and all the oppression that you caused my people i'm also going to reward you for it and so I wanted to say that because it's important to understand the dark hour that we're walking into and even people in America, because I am just one of those people who have benefited greatly and I don't even know the oppression that some people have known systemically with poverty because of the satan but even here we're going to see certain levels of persecution that could cause us to maybe have to let go of some of those material things that we've gained because we refuse to bow down to satan now let me say that again it's going to cause us our faith our belief in messiah is going to cause us to let go of some of the things that we may have acquired because of our belief in messiah which sounds contradictory to what you just read right because you're like oh he made us these promises but let me tell you when the affliction comes that's trying to make you let go of what father said i'll tell you what you better let the wealth and the riches go because then you know that they weren't given by him or in some cases it's a trial it is a proving that you have to let that go because you're not going to compromise for example i'll use something as simple as this current situation with this vaccination and i know for some people this is touchy right because it's like well you don't know well I've researched that vaccination very much. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor of education. I'm a highly educated person. So I, I don't play games when it comes down to researching things. And what I found is that many of the ingredients, even though they've made it nanotech, that protein that they've wrapped that mRNA in is unclean okay so therefore i because i'm torah observing i can't put unclean things in my temple as a matter of fact the article that i read was very very deep and sinister they're using the protein to wrap up that nanotech and i won't go into all the words here because some of them is just going to further prompt confusion the sperm or the sperm whale's fat in his skull come on now you know if we torah observing we cannot be putting no sperm well fat in our body because the father's already said you cannot put unclean things in your temple so if it comes down to the wire where they say hey you either got to take this or you're going to lose your job what do i have to do what 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 choice do i have to make at this point i've got to choose to separate and to accept that level of persecution to take a loss. Now, does that mean that I've not walked in promise? No, that means that I'm entering into a greater level of intimacy and promise because now I'm all on you, Father. 
I'm all on you for my substance. I'm all on you for my survival. You said you wouldn't leave me. So that's where these promises are very powerful to begin to apply to your mind now so that if we walk into such a season, we have the strength in our ruach, in our inward man to rebuke the devil and to let him know, yeah, I see you trying to squeeze me, but guess what? I can't be squeezed because I'm in the arms of the almighty. So no, you're not going to squeeze me into doing something that he told me not to do. You can keep your job. You can keep your system. You can keep your money because I'm in somebody who can supernaturally pro provide me with bread. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Supernaturally provide me with bread. So it's time for our faith to start reaching that level. Because if not, we're going to find ourselves in some compromising position. And I can tell you, now ain't the time to be playing around with the Satan. This ain't it. It never was, but especially not right now. Can't be compromising with the devil. Right. Mm -mm. It never was a time, but especially not now. Really? And so I just appreciate you giving me that opportunity because I wanted to shout it out that we are entering to a new season, another season of, of, of levels of persecution like we may have never seen. Because for many people, that, 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 that one situation, because there are many situations, some of them that I don't even care to talk about right now, but that one situation, it's gonna, if it comes down to that, it's going to cause a lot of people to have to shake themselves up and rethink, well, what am I doing? Am I really going to keep toil or am I going to kind of bend a little bit? Because, you know, after all, Father said, you know, he gonna, they're going to start using the promises the wrong way. See, sometimes you just got to suffer. You just got to suck it up. You got to suffer. And it is what it is. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't love you or that he's not looking out for your best in interest. We're purified by the fire. Don't forget that. The Hebrew boys had to get in. Mm, come on. They had to get in it. He didn't stop them from getting in, but he delivered them in the midst. I That's the glory. Boy. And I'm going to stop. But I just wanted to share that out. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Hallelujah. Well, you made a good point there about the promises. You know, it's not, you know, the promises the way that we always think of it is in a, in a sense where what are you going to give me, you know, but a promise isn't always that kind of a promise. A promise is that he's going to make a way out that he will provide. Like you said, he's the provisions, all of these things, you know, are all aspects of the provisions, the promises, all of the things that he's made to us are directly to those that believe. And we're going to need them during these times coming up. And you're right. You know, you're going to have to make some decisions. Yahushua said it. You know, you sell all you got and go ahead and come on, serve me. You know, in a sense, it's basically you're not being tied to anything in this world. There's nothing in this life that is more important to you than him, than your salvation. Hallelujah. Brother Jadiel, I see you there. Shabbat shalom, brother. Are you there? there you Shabbat shalom. Go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, Shabbat. I, I like the I, I like the um, the refreshing the refreshing idea of, of the promises of Yah. I think um, it's very important because we get caught up in how earthly matters work and how how things on this world works that we think that um, Yahuwah is restricted to to doing things according to to that way. Uh, I think last night we were talking about prayer and, and the removal of sin, how Yahushua came here to remove, uh, to remove our sin. And that when we approach Yah for forgiveness, that we ought to believe, that we ought to believe and trust him, that he will do what he said. And he promised to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that's not like, hey, I'm going to pray and then next week, next week he's going to actually follow through and, and actually clean you. And that's not, that's not how the promises of scripture should work. There's things that he's done already to prove himself. Um, it, it's interesting. Scripture tells us to prove him with the, with his promises and there's things in our lives that he's done already to prove himself to us that those things that he has not done already shouldn't be a problem at that point. Uh, just like with Abraham, he proven himself with Abraham to the point where he told him he was going to receive the land and Abraham never received the land for himself. Uh, when you look at Hebrews chapter 11, it says that he saw it afar off, but he was, he already trusted in Yah because of the things that he's done in his life at that point. 
you know. So likewise, when it comes to us, there's things that he's done in our life that he already proved that he was there for us. So the things that he's that he's being strategic and he's going to allow to come to fruition at a at a at his appointed time, those are the things that we should be trusting fervently because we've all he's already shown us that he is with us, you know. And then on top of that, we have. Uh, our historical references from scripture showing that he's he has delivered us from Egypt he has delivered us from Assyria he's delivered us from Babylon he's delivered us so many times in history his people so many times in history there's no reason for us to think he's not going to do it in the future um and i want to i want to look at uh a verse in second corinthians chapter 1 uh, there's a verse in Second Corinthians, oh, a few verses in Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse seventeen to um, seventeen to let's say twenty, and it says, um, it says, when I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness, or the things that that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh? that with me that there should be a yay a poss yay yay and nay nay that means like a possibility of yay and a possibility of nay verse 18 it says but as elohim is true our word toward you was not a possibility of yay and a possibility of nay for the son of elohim yahushua messiah who was preached among you by us even by me and silvanius and timothy was not a possibility of yay and a possibility of nay but in him was a definite yes it says in verse 20 for all the promises of elohim in him are a definite yes and in him so let it be or amen unto the glory of elohim by us so so the things that he is that we do when it comes to these earthly matters yeah it's a possibility of yay it's a possibility it might not happen um, like what sister brought up, there's a possibility of, of, of flourishing and there's a possibility of persecution. Uh, there's definitely a, a, a going to be persecution, but I'm um, meaning like in different situations, different scenarios, there's a possibility it may go this way. There's a possibility it might not. But when it comes to the promises of Yah, there's no possibility of not. There is no possibility of not. And this is the mindset of the believer. The mindset of the believer is that there is no possibility that he will not do what he said he would do for us. Whether it's now, whether it's tomorrow, even if we have to die knowing that he's going to do it for us, and he will do it, whether he do it now or whether he resurrect us to fulfill his promise. And I just want to encourage the brethren to, to trust and believe in a different way don't trust and believe like you do with earthly things you know trust and believe because this you know as 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 us proving that he is our elohim that he's our mighty one that he has already proven himself in our life there's no more he that we don't have to put him through another test for him to prove himself to us he's already proven himself so believe praise Jeff. hallelujah some good things to ponder there that you mentioned, you know, is it's interesting how we perceive these promises, but yet there's, there's different ways that we can look at the promises of him. They're always going to be, he's going to say yay to his word, right? He's always going to fulfill his word. Like you said, he cannot help it. He has to, he's bound by his word. Now, how does that come? Like you said, even with, uh, with uh, Abraham, you know, and with Moshe, you know, they, they believe things before they see them. You know, this is something that they had a confidence in that if, if he was, if they were told that something was going to happen, it was going to happen. Just don't know how, how are you going to, how's it going to happen? That's going to be, how's he going to deliver it? How's he going to bring it to your life? You know, but you need to stand firm no matter what, no matter how long it takes. Cause that's what Amuna is, you know, believing in those things that you can't see. There's no evidence of it before you believe it, you know, but if he promises it in his word and you stand on that promise, guaranteed that promise will be kept because Yahu is not a liar. You know, he cannot lie. He's not a man that he can lie. So if he's made a promise to you and you stand on that promise in Amuna or in faith, if you will, the word's very clear. It's going to be given to you. It's going to happen, you know. 
And there's, like we've discussed already, there's different levels or different ways to look at promises. It's not always, you know, the, the, the fun and the, and the sunny, you know, giving you millions of dollars or Lambos or any of these type of things that, you know, that man desires that are, you know, just even, they even bring you into a place of coveting and stuff. You know, he's not going to bring you a, a promise that you're holding on to that's going to destroy you. You know, you just got to know that he's, he loves you too much to allow his promises to destroy you. The promises that he has given you are very straightforward and, and you can hold on to them. Um, but we can't get ourselves in the way, I guess, is the way to, that I'm trying to say this is we can't get our own expectations and put our own uh, thoughts in there, what he's promising us, you know and try to pervert it and try like a lot of men do. They try to twist it a little bit so it fits into their scenario. We can't do that with Yahuwah and his promises, but we can believe them. Hallelujah. Sister, I'm Melinda. Haven't seen you in a while. Shabbat Shalom. Looking forward. How are you? Shabbat Shalom. Where are you at anyways? I don't see you. Where'd you go? There you are down there. I got. I guess I gotta uh, ask you to unmute yourself, huh? Are you there? There you go. I think. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hey, brother Johnny. You talking to me? Oh, all right. I got it. And now I was unable to uh, unmute myself. It kept going back to the host. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. I think that was a very good point that uh, someone just made because um, I'm humbled by the fact that I love to confess the word. Matter of fact, I've made that a, a part of my uh, spiritual discipline each and every day. But uh, one thing that I have learned uh, is that we can do this thing from like an eclecticism type of manner, you know, like you were just talking about. Sometimes we go and we select which promise it is that we want to see come into fruition in our life. And that may not be the Father's will. We can stand on faith as a promise that we really, really want and still up to the Father if it's at our appointed time to fulfill that in our lives. But there's even a more... A submissive way that is very effectual and that is when we pray and then we stay in the Father's presence, stay in the Word and He gives us a portion. He gives us a, a dispensation of the Word. That Word comes alive and as surely as He speaks to us through that Word, that Word comes to pass because His Word does not return unto Him void. It accomplishes that which he pleased and it prospers in the thing whereto he send it. So when you send that word to you, and once you get that first experience of how he operates and he sends his word specifically to the individuals that he has appointed at that particular time because he knows all of our situation, you never ever will doubt him again. So if we can choose the eclectic type man, eclecticism, they call it cafeteria style. Like you are at a buffet, you say, I want a little bit of this and I want a little bit of that, but no, I don't want any of that. Now you can stand on those promises and they may or may not come to fruition according to the Father's will. But when he gives you something, you, bet you, you can be rest assured, it's going to come to pass. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Or it may come in a different form than you think, but it'll still accomplish the same thing that you're asking for. You know, he, he, he's, his ways are higher than ours. We don't even know what we need or what we want sometimes. You know, we just uh, throw out things and like, like a wish list, like you're trying to tell him what you want. You know, this is what I want for, you know, from a birthday or something. You know how it was when you were a kid, you know, you tell him somebody what you want uh, out of the promises. But he said, these are the promises I have made to you you know, if you walk in my, my commandments, my statutes and all these things, these promises are available to you. If you are able to believe, then you can receive them, you know, uh, and it's all in due timing too, you know, so that doesn't mean the promise ain't going to come because you don't see it right away. You know, sometimes these promises that 
we think we're asking for, sometimes those promises can be a, a, a destruction in our lives. You know, you're asking for uh, exceptional wealth or something, and if you were to get it, it would probably re uh, destroy your relationship with Yahuwah because you wouldn't be looking to him anymore. You'd be looking to the things that you want to buy, your the desires of your heart. Then you forget about the guy that, or the one that actually gives you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Brother Danny, I see you had your hand up. Shabbat shalom, brother. Oh, yes. Uh, praise, yeah. Uh, Elder Rick, uh, these words that you have quoted here are, are very powerful promises. And I was very busy taking down notes, <laughs> all of those uh, scriptures that you've mentioned. And at the end, when I closed my eyes and I said, what is this promises all about me? And uh, when you said about uh, in the concluding part that these promises can help us move on, you know, that word move on, uh, it struck my heart, you know, and uh, from there I also began to construct my, my mind as I, as I interact and listen to what has been said here. Uh, like what Brother Jariel mentioned about the promise of Yahuwah to Abraham. Uh, I'd like also to connect uh, my thought to that, towards that. Uh, bringing all of your attention to Joshua chapter 20 three verses 14 to 15 uh, when Joshua was about uh, uh, old already at this time uh, before he died he, before he gave his farewell message he reminded the people of Israel that uh, Joshua was talking about one word not one word has failed of all the good words which Yahua your Elohim have spoken concerning you. So I'd like to highlight the word, not one word has failed of all the good words. So I'd like to connect with that promises that uh, Elder Rick has brought us uh, here uh, this evening, uh, this, this day. These promises are good words and uh, spoken by Joshua to the people of Israel. He said, not one word has failed. So I'd like to uh, shout it out here that these words spoken by Elder Rick, quoted from the scriptures, these are good words. And none of, not a word that failed. All of this come into fruition, come into a, a, a actuality. So I'd like to honor Yah for, for all these good promises that he has given us. Then lastly, I'd like also to connect what you quoted in Titus chapter 3 verse 5. You quoted in Titus 3 verse 5 that he saved us not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his compassion. That uh, quoted a verse you have said, I'd like to relate it to Deuteronomy chapter 9 verses 5 to 6 which, is, which really brings into my mind when I read this when, uh, in front of my children uh, every time we go into Bible reading. Deuteronomy 9, verse uh, 5 to 6, uh, reminded us, uh, reminded uh, the people of Israel, not because you are righteous or uprightness of your heart, but because of the wickedness of these nations. Meaning, uh, uh, Mose was reminding the people that Yahuwah is going to, you know, kill or uh, annihilate these people. And Yahuwah was, was saying, not because you're righteous or upright, but because they are wicked, and then verse 6 it says, In order to establish the word which Yahuwah swore to your father Abraham. So in other words, not because these Israelite people are good people, are righteous people, but because these people who are living there are wicked and, they are, and Yahuwah is punishing them. And secondly, because Yahuwah made a promise to Abraham. And that promise of Abraham come into fruition even though the Israelites were unrighteous and wicked uh, because Yahuwah made a promise to Abraham. So out of that promise, he's going to fulfill it in spite that the Israelites are stiff-necked people, hard-headed, rebellious people, but Yahuwah still fulfilled his promise 
not because of the Israelites people, but because he made it a promise to Abraham. So I think uh, that's the nature, the character of our Abba Father. He is true to his word. Praise ya. Thank you, Brother Elder Geek. Sabbat shalom to all. Are you calling us stubborn and hard neck? Hard headed, stiff neck, rather? <laughs> you, you, you're right, though. I mean, uh, we are. You know, we, 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 we have a tendency of holding on to things that we really shouldn't hold on to and believing in things we shouldn't believe. You know, we ain't a whole lot different than they were back then. You know, it's a vicious cycle that the people of Yah keep going through. You know, and hopefully we learn the lesson along the way as we continue to study and grow together. You know, we'll try to not make those kind of errors that they made. So thank you, brother. Sister Robbie, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Rick. How are you doing? I am Baruch. Thank you for asking. Great. So good to hear your voice. It's so good to be on the line with my sisters and brothers. All praises to Yahuwah on his set apart day. I apologize. I didn't hear the whole uh, message, but what I did hear was definitely a blessing of Baruka. Uh, I just wanted to say that this message is, goes so well with our uh, Sabbath because we can have that joy and that rest in Yahuwah of his promises that everything he says will happen has already been done. He is definitely the promise keeper. And I just say, praise Yah. Thank you so much for the message. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah for sure. You know, there's something I was going to mention when Danny was talking and I forgot about it. But if you think about the promises that we've been reading today, there's promises from the very beginning that have been written and spoken to us for our edification promises telling us that we had a Mashiach that was going to be coming. You know, we, we, we broke down the prophecies uh, a couple weeks back. Uh, and these are promises. If we look at them, a prophecy, a promise, a promise that a Mashiach was going to come and he was going to do the things that he was, that he was, that the word was speaking that he was going to do. There's another aspect of a promise that look how long it took for that promise to be delivered. But there have been people throughout the very ages of history that have hold on, held on to that, that didn't see that happen before they took their last breath. But they will at one point see, because they believed even before he, uh, be, before he came. So those are other types of promises. There's different types of promises that we see in Scripture some of them pertaining to us in our lives, some of them pertaining to Mashiach and, and future events that are going to take place that we may or may not be involved in. But in all of those prophecies, there's promises that are always interwoven in between all of that to give us hope and confidence that no matter what comes in this life, that he, we have an adversary that's with us. You know, Yahushua came, he, he gave his life, and we are his and there's a promise that says that those that are given to him, he will not lose. Not one will be lost that is given to Mashiach. You and I are not going to be lost. There's a promise in all of that. You know, he knows who are, who's are his and who's aren't. He knows the beginning from the end. So these promises that are written as prophecies of those that are going to be coming in are there to encourage us to continue to strive forward to to achieve that ultimate goal of eternal life, salvation, if you will. But the, but that's even just, that's the grand, that's like the cheery. The relationship is what the best, the best part of this is, is coming to the knowledge of him and coming into a relationship with him where you get to know him. You get to understand him better. You get to walk with him. You get to see him in your life fulfilling promises that you didn't even ask for. You know, that's how awesome he is. He delivers promises before we can even ask or think them. So that's how awesome, and that's how much he loves us. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah for that. Uh, Aaron, Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. I just want to say Toda Rabbah. Um, try to clear myself up. I'm so blessed by all of this i'm just overwhelmed so the tears are flowing it's a little hard to speak but like i just 
I'm so overwhelmed with gratitude to Abba. I just don't even, I just have to say Toda Rabba Abba for everything. Um, all of this even is promises being fulfilled, you know, as we gather and speak. And um, this is actually like my first time to ever, um, to officially um, start doing Shabbat this way. Like I've been learning, so I'm still learning. And, but I just want to say total Rabat, thank you all so much. Cause it's such, so much blessing. Total Rabat Abba. Hallelujah. Total Rabba Yehua. Thank you for that confession. It's beautiful to hear people's hearts being put out there like this, allowing us to experience that with you. So, you know, it's amazing when he touches us, you know, and for your first time to be able to share that with us, thank you. And I'll say thank you. Brother Kevin Crumbs Lyle, Shabbat Shalom, brother. Thank you for unmuting me. <laughs> you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> oh, Yahuwah. <laughs> Asking ye shall receive. I've heard from everybody that I needed to hear from, except Elder Rod. I haven't heard from him yet. Thank you, brother. Uh, everybody, I always pray for a good message and that it touches me directly. And man, in his time, he gives us what we need. In his time, I came from nothing. Here it is almost a year later and I'm, I've, I've been increased. And um, funny you should mention the crumbs as we prepare for Passover. And I'm checking my toaster as we speak. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Definitely appreciate you and uh, your growth, you know. Definitely, I've seen growth from you uh, over this year. And uh, it's been a pleasure watching it and experiencing it and being part of it. You know, uh, all your crumbs that come with it, it really, you know, we all got our own crumbs that we got to deal with. And uh, that is coming up. So if you're lucky, you might be able to hear some, some encouraging words from Brother Rod, though. You know, he looked like he's wanting to say something to you. I don't know. I could be just wrong. But what do you think, Brother Rod? I, did, I thought I made you a co-host, I guess. Oh, yeah, you went out and came back, didn't you? Okay, there you are now. Yeah, yeah, I came in late. I missed the, 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 the message, and I missed, and we had, had, had internet issues. That's why I kept going in and out when I finally did come in. But um, I caught the tail end of what Jadiel was breaking down and, you know, heard the testimony from... Um, Melinda and the, and the new sister Erin and uh, you know I'm obviously Mr. Goodwin but you know anything dealing with Yah's promises and him revealing those to us is going to be beautiful you know because the way that he reveals them to us um, you know specifically when it comes to scripture because that's what we lie our faith in. Um, I don't know what was said prior, but I often think of Abraham in that, you know, um, he didn't, he just trusted Yah. You know, he didn't know what was going to happen when, when, when Isaac was on, laid, laid on the altar. But he, he was going to do what Yah told him to do, you know, having faith that, that this was the son that the promises would come through. Um, that he would raise him from the dead if he was to carry out his mission, you know, and that childlike trust, you know, that, you know, the not adding logic and mathematics and all of these things that we try to do to go so deep, childlike trust in him is what he desires from us in everything and, and how often we fail, you know, in the simplest things and the simplest of tests um, and how we have to remain faithful in having that childlike understanding he says that a child can understand his ways his words his faith and um we have to believe that you know if i tell my son something he's going to believe it he's going to continue to believe it unless i don't stand true 
right? And then if I don't stand true, if I continually let him down, then the mistrust. But as long as I do what I say I'm going to do, he's going to trust me because I'm his father. And we have to do that same thing with Yasuo. Um, praise Yah, I'm sure I'll, I'll go back and listen to it and, and uh, I have to leave your polo. <laughs> but um, I'm excited to hear from all the brothers and sisters um, just as well. You know, it's exciting to hear how you're growing, uh, what you're getting from the message and, and, and what you guys are sharing um, um, because of it. So praise Yah, Shabbat Shalom. I like that point about Abraham, you know, and how he trusted Yahuwah. Didn't know what was going to happen, but he trusted that Yahuwah said he would provide. Mm. He would. Even if he took his son. Absolutely. He was going to believe him all the way through it. That is how we need to be with the promises of Yahuwah. Standing upon him all the way until even beyond. If we, think it's, if we still think it's over, like if that would have happened where he did happen to take his son, he knew that Yahuwah wouldn't let him stay that way because he knew he made a promise to him about his heirs, you know, and he knew that Yahuwah made a promise that only Yahuwah could keep. So therefore, no matter what was going to happen, he knew that the outcome was going to be the same, no matter how Yahuwah decided to deliver it to him. And he did it the way that he did. And that's a big lesson for us to learn when we read in these promises or when we hear a promise spoken to us from Yahuwah. We got to hold on to it all the way, no matter what. He tells us whatever he leads us through, no matter what it appears to look like. Like, this isn't what you promised me. But he's saying, you don't even know because you can't see the other side yet. You know, I got to get you through here to get you to there. You know, he knows the path and the way that we got to get to where he wants us to be. You know, that, that that's the that's where we hold on to the promise. That's where Amuna and these promises are, they go hand in hand. What's the sense of having a promise if you can't believe it? Like you said, with your son, if you said something so far, as long as you keep your word, he's going to keep believing you. Well, it's the same way with us. The father said, you would know how to give your sons good gifts. You know, how much greater is the Father to be able to give you this great gift of the Ruach and other things that he's promised to give us? You know, do you have something more you wanted to add? Yeah, just that, you know, our experience oftentimes becomes that of Peter, you know, and, and, and the walking on the water. And his focus left keeping his eyes on Yahushua and started looking at the, the raving waves around him. And that's what we do. We look at our situation and we, we're asking for the Father to, to give us, you know, um, uh, uh, to get us out of something or take us through something or to bless us with something. And he says, be patient. I'm bringing it to you. Look at scripture. Look at what you have as a historical record of the way that I do this and, what, and, and when I give them, you know. And those things that get us to those next moments are things that strengthen us. You know, I often use the, the, the strength of, of, of that is built with the caterpillar in the cocoon. If you tear him out before he's able to break through, that caterpillar, when he gets his wings, will never fly. Because the strength that it, that's built up in breaking out of that cocoon, that's what's necessary to get him to the point where he can use those wings to fly. And, you know, we often quit you know, in our circumstances, in our situations. You know, and we can we can add those things in in our lives. What are the situ what is the situation where you you fail to trust them? Am I about to go to a situation where I where I will have to rely on our trust in him? You know, we see <laughs> we see the beautiful eyes of Yahushua when he's all that we have to depend on. You know, when we got these, I think I think Jadiel was saying something about other things depending on all these things we build up around us. But when those things are gone and you only have him, you can only trust him. That's that's where he wants us to be. And he wants us to be there ahead of time based on his track record. He's given us his track record. And not just in scripture, in our lives. You know, and we forget him. Each and every time, you know, so that's it. Uh, there's a lot of hands popping up, so 
how far back. Well, something you said that made me have this image pop into my head, you know, where you're saying, you know, we got this promise that's right before us, and there's a lot of people to, you know, you see this image of these two people are digging gold on, on each side of the tunnel. The one guy oh, right, right, right. Yeah. abandons the, all this pile of gold that's right there for him to get. Yeah, yeah. He's just right there to get it, but he he, he gets distracted. It's the same right. thing that I see what you just said with this these promises, you know, are we going to endure all the way to the end? That's that's the that's the question, because we can keep, we can be digging, and then we get to a point where we just like, man, is this thing ever going to come? And we quit just before the breakthrough. That that would that's the worst thing if you were able to look and see I was this close and I quit, I gave up. No, you can't. You have to be convinced what the Father has said. The Father is able to achieve. He's able to do. And it's only in him and only through him that that's possible. So, you know, that's the other side of the promises that, that we have to, he makes a promise. We got to hold on to that promise. We got to grab a hold of it. We got to have the Amuna to say, you know what? I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe you who or whatever, what he said all the way through, no matter what it is, you know, if you're looking for a provision financially or, or a job or, or, or a healing, it doesn't matter what it is that you're uh, that you're trusting him. Whatever that promise is, grab a hold of it and do not let go. Hallelujah, Sister Danielle. Shabbat shalom. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna go in the other room because my mom is in here too, and there's an echo. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that first of all, I, I'm in California, so getting up at seven in the morning is. Um, more challenging for me, I would say, um, than probably other people. But um, I woke up this morning kind of grumpy and I want to apologize to my mom. Sorry, mama. Um, but um, I just wanted to share when Sister Erin got on and um, I just wanted to share that I started watching the Assembly of Yahuwah videos, I want to say back in October when my mom had shared it with me. And um, that was right before I was immersed. And um, I really found the brothers and sisters who would share in this group, um, like the people, like people like I was looking for <laughs> um, through all of my spiritual travels. And uh, many of you know, I spent 30 years in New Age just looking for people that I could trust and be a sister to and have the men be a brother to me because I had had pretty um, difficult relationships with men and women also. But um, I didn't know what it was to be like a woman, a mom, a sister um, in righteousness. And I, I had desperately wanted that. And I can, I can just relate to her overwhelming. And I'm not trying to put my experience in your shoes, but just to empathize that um, when I started sitting in Sabbath with this group and forcing myself to get up, but it was for to praise Yah, right? So it wasn't like that much trouble, <laughs> but, um, but still 7 a.m. is challenging for me, but I love it so much. And I can tell you, I've, I have been brought to tears so many times, not just from the message in the group, but just how l much love is present in this community and um you know i i can just understand because we go out in this world and it's very difficult to find people who love yahuwah um at all or are interested in hearing that you love you <laughs> that's what i have had the most challenge with i mean people don't have to love him but i can't even tell them that i love him and um and we studied Amuna in the women's Hebrew um, uh, study this week. And so your talk this morning, Brother uh, Elder Rick, is just, I feel it's so needed right now. Um, and how the, the other sister who had shared about, it's, it's such a stark contrast to this love of Yahuwah. And you can see what is in the world and it is an absence is a complete lack of an absence of Yahuwah and his love and so when you come upon 
this group of people, and I know that this is Yahuwah doing all of this, bringing us together, helping those of us who have been so lost and desperate. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old and just desperately seeking for this love to have Yahuwah's love be exemplified and shown through these brothers and sisters. Um, every Sabbath, I feel so blessed. And I just started keeping Sabbath with you all, I think, in November. And I feel like every Sabbath, I am brought closer and closer and closer to my, to my Savior and to my Yahuwah and to my, a healthy understanding of my own being. Um, so I just wanted to say, like, I, and just a testimony to this group and to the new brothers and sisters, you know, I look forward to hearing all of your journeys and, and your testimony and how this, how this studies are helping you and changing you and growing you. And just to hear how much Yahuwah loves us. And did this group is a testimony to that because you can come in here and really feel it. And I've never had sisters in any group that I've been in be so welcoming and inviting and warm and loving. And it's just, it, he, Yah's love in them heals me. So thank you so much to all of you. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Praise Yah. <laughs> Beautiful words. Thank you for sharing your words. So encouragement, you know, this is you who is doing, ain't no doubt about it, how this was put together and how we were brought together and how this was made was, orchestrated definitely by you who on every way and the people that are here are called and drawn you know I, I truly believe those that are here are supposed to be here part of this family so we love you and appreciate you guys as well much love in this house hallelujah all righty uh Yaniv Yahel Shabbat Shalom to have a Shabbat Shalom Yaniv Yael. Uh, Baruch Yahuwah, you know, I have to apologize also for being late. Uh, I was resting. The father had me up early. Uh, and But it's so interesting. I can't wait to go back in and watch the video because he had me looking up scriptures on the word confidence. And uh, it was really just in my Ruach to look up every scripture I could find about being confident. And I looked up the Hebrew word and it's uh, Mekta. Mitha, M-I-D-T-A-C-H. And confidence is a reliance on someone to do what they said that they would do. And that's what we have to be. And the Father's just been building my own amuna and trusting that he's going to do what he promised to do when it's in his will. <laughs> you know, and so that's... Um, that's a better quote to me. And I just want to say thank you for inviting me and just be encouraged, Yasharal. And I love you guys and I appreciate it. And that's it. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Thank you for sharing those words of encouragement. Um, definitely, that's a, that's a good word that he's got you uh, digging into. And it's kind of interesting how it lines up. Doesn't surprise me. He does that all the time. I hear it all the time how... We're studying this, and then you come up with this message. Well, that's because we're all under the same, we're in the same ruach, you know. You know, he's speaking that message to us, so that shows us that we're in one accord, that we're where we're, we're supposed to be. So, thank you for sharing that, brother. I see, uh, <laughs> Sister Anna. Shabbat shalom again. Shabbat shalom. I'm sorry. I just wanted to share this out simply because um, I think it's important when we are trying to gain maturity, which is what I think that we are all pursuing here on this line. We're pursuing more and more maturity and growth in, in Father. And so I just wanted to shift perspectives to Father's perspective because he has um, really matured me in how I look at life. And um, I won't say I've totally arrived because of course this is a lifelong journey but i no longer see life's trials the way i used to see them because i've learned to look at them from his perspective i've learned to look at them as a point of growth and also to look at them as 100 percent proof that he's real because you can see the evil <laughs> the the widespread prevalence of evil is 100 percent truth that there has to be there has to be 
a almighty Elohim because somebody is working real hard to make sure all of his principles and all of his ways are downplayed. Even as, even as simple as just looking at, um, you know, social structure, educational structure, food structure, like everything about the world structure is satanic on a great level because everything about the world structure is against Torah. And while many people may say, well, what does that have to do with the promises? In, in, in the midst of the trial of what we're going through being in a dark world, it sheds light on the need for the promises and it sheds light on the need to refocus perspective that this is all a lesson. Mm -hmm. See, Father is making it clear, this is why you need me. This is why you need me because the world without me is dark, it's wicked, and it's destructive. And after this season, right, that we're in the season of man, nobody that really loves Yah is ever going to disobey because we're going to remember where we came from. We're going to remember what it was like when the world was absent as far as governorship, because the world is not completely absent of Torah, but governorship of the world is not under Torah. It's just not. And for people who try to put it there, I mean, come on, let's look at what's going on around us. Now, when Yahushua returns, then the fullness of the governance, the scripture says he's going to rule with an iron hand. And see, people that ain't really used to love are going to still have a problem. That's where revelation comes in with the revolt once again for people who are like, wow, even after Yahushua returns, you're going to have people who are going to rebel? Yeah, because they're not going to be used to real love. Real love is discipline. Come on. Because I remember when I first got in presence of Father, he was disciplining me. He was giving me the truth <laughs> about me, about how you got to shape up if you want to really get in my kingdom. You got to do what I say. And what I say is not optional for you to follow. Yeah, you're doing it because if you want to be with me, you're going to obey me and you're going to come subject to what I say. You're not going to question me. Because where, how do we get where we are? People questioning Father. Adam, Eve, right? Questioning father, not sure if I should really do what father says or is this other voice over here that's talking to me, maybe this is the right way. You know, maybe maybe father didn't know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So all the trial and all the promise, it really shows me it's lesson. It's lesson. I'm teaching you why you need me. I'm teaching you the discipline of my love. While the world is absent of Father, because the world is absent of his discipline. Because he can't discipline a bastard. Come on. I can't discipline you if you're not going to be let me be a father. And if you're not going to accept me as the authority figure, because that's what a father is. He's the authority figure. He's got the last word. And you doing what daddy say. At least in my house, you doing what daddy say. <laughs> You, you're not raising up against daddy or that's a real punishment for that. <laughs> and so, so shall it be when we are faced with that great day of judgment. There's real punishment for those who think they're going to rebel against father and they're going to rise up and go, oh, we're going to do what we want because we can see our current situation, what happens when we do what we want right as collectively. It messes everything up. This beautiful creation that father has established it's all going awry. Why? Because of the absence of Torah. And scripture, it points to that, that that's how the world got to the shape that it's in because of the absence of Torah. And so, when, yeah, when he brings it back, people have to fully understand the beauty of it in order to really make it in. Because there, there, there is no, you know, justifiable sin, which is something that you, that you went over. When I say that justifiable, oh, he know my heart. He know what I meant. Yeah, no. <laughs> He knows what you did. And so if, you, if you're not doing what he said, there's no need to say, well, he knew what I meant. Yeah, he, he saw what you did, and what you did is what you meant. And that's the other side of the promise. You, you go that, you're going, you've got another promise there you got to do that he's making. <laughs> yeah, and so I just wanted to share that out because sometimes the enemy – would have us focus more on the problem than the solution and not have us embrace the lesson. You know what I mean? Right. Not have us embrace the lesson because as we're going through this, this, this life journey, what we're seeing is that father is always right. 
and that he's never wrong and why the world needs his order you yeah. know why the world needs his order got to get us got to get us where he needs us to be he's molded and shaping us each and every day you know we get that much closer so you know you said a whole lot there that makes a lot of sense you know when we think about this walk that we're on and how honored we should be that we are set apart and out of the world because it's not a very pleasant place to be. I really don't enjoy the world too much. You know, and I understand what the word says about the love of the world. You know, I'm glad that uh, the world's as ugly as it is because it makes it easy for me not to really be in, uh, want to be part of it. So, well, thank you for your, your input there. Alrighty, anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we conclude this discussion this morning? It's been very enlightening to say the least. Well, it looks like we've uh, we've exhausted our thoughts on this subject. So praise Yahuwah for his promises and may they come true in your lives and may you continue to walk and hold on to those promises each step of the way. Hallelujah. So thank you again for your, your input and your participation this morning. May Yahuwah continue to brock you and keep you and make his face shine upon you, give you his shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody.